Well, John, we'll start with the news about Zesh. How pleased are you to officially bring him into your team? Yeah, delighted. It's something we've been working on for a couple of weeks now. And to have the opportunity to bring Zesh in on a full-time basis with the first team is, uh, is great news, I think, for everybody connected to the football club. He's done terrifically well since he came in in that interim role. And ever since I've been in the building from day one, he's been a real asset to have on the coaching staff. So absolutely delighted. He completes your backroom team. Obviously, you've got John Harley, Joe Podomo, Dan Ashby as well. How good has it been to work with them since your arrival, along with Sporting Director Rich Hughes? I mean, great. They've all done a fantastic job, every single one of them within their within their roles. And uh, they've worked incredibly hard. I think that's the most important thing is how hard they've worked and how diligent they've been and the quality of work that they've produced. Uh, I think, you know, as, as shown on the pitch, there's... There's probably been some more obvious ones, and then and, and Joe's got a lot of uh, a lot of credit for the set pieces, for example, in the media over recent weeks, and quite rightly. Um, if you take somebody like Dan, who, who works away behind the scenes, and, and you're never really going to be um, front facing or getting too much credit for the work that he does, but he's absolutely crucial to what we do day in day out. And so, it's, yeah, it's really nice to, to get that, that get that team together, and you know, been working really really well now. I think for the last couple of months, and long may it continue. Port Vale this Saturday. What sort of test are you expecting? Yeah, Port Vale are a side that came up last year, momentum at the back end of last year, and they've been very good this year. I'm comfortable in terms of their league position. They've got a good squad and you know, a good manager, a good manager that's been in the in the league now for a number of years. So we expect a, a, a good test against Port Vale. Um, I think they were a bit unlucky last week against Burton. The week before, they were excellent against Fleetwood and probably unlucky not to take all three points away from home. So we think they'll be a very well-organised side with some good players in there, and, and they're extremely well-coached as well. You'll be without Joe Morrell and Dane Scarlett, who are away with their international teams. How are you going to navigate around their absence? Yeah, I think it's about utilising the squad at that point, and we always knew that uh, there were going to be a couple of absentees around the international break, and uh, you know it's two important players for us who have had a good, a big contribution over the past few weeks as well. So yeah, they'll, they'll definitely be a miss, but I think it's going to be a chance for a couple of other of the squad members to step up and step into their places and, and take advantage of that opportunity. And that's what having the squad's all about. We've really stressed that over the past few weeks, and again, weeks like this and make it even more obvious that you need a good, solid squad to compete at this level. I see, you know, you'll be without Joe in the middle. We saw Jay Mingi against Bournemouth the other day. Is he ready to sort of make that step into the into the 18, into the 18 on the match day? Yeah, I mean, certainly having completed 90 minutes the, the other day physically, he's, um, he's, he's capable and ready to, to step into it. And we've got uh, plenty of other options there as well. So it's good to have those ones returning from injury. Uh, we saw a few the other night that came back and, and got minutes under their belt and Again, just making sure they're all ready to come in and compete for a spot on Saturday is the important thing. Injury-wise, Marlon Pack, how's he getting on with his recovery? Yeah, Marlon's doing really well. He was out on the grass with us today uh, doing a modified training session. So we did the, the warm-up, passing drill and, and a couple of the possession drills and then went in. We we're still managing Marlon um, pretty well. He, he's not lost a huge amount of fitness over the last three to four weeks, which is good news. But you know we have to bear in mind that he has undergone surgery. And we're going to need to make sure that we reintroduce him slowly. But hopefully within a couple of weeks, Marlon will be back and, and ready for selection. Another player who underwent surgery, Ronan Curtis, completed his ACL injury, uh, surgery yesterday. Sorry, How's, What's the next step for him? Yeah, I mean, the next step is yeah, he's at home now, he's recovering. And um, it's just a long road to rehab, really, I think. Um, as far as we know, the, the surgery went really well. I um, spoke to him briefly over text this morning and, and Ronan seems to be in a good place. He's, he's happy with everything. And I think it's quite a relief when you, you get the, the diagnosis for the ACL injury. You've got a bit of time in between that and actual, the actual surgery. The minute you get the surgery done, you know that you're on the road to recovery and you can start again. And that's what it's all about for Ronan now. It's about the early stages of, of rehab, making sure that he gets as mobile as he possibly can on the knee and without taking too many risks. And you know, he's in the, in the hands of the medical team at the moment, which is great. Uh, just hope that he you know recovers as well as possible and, and comes back fit and strong